of the meatballs. So these are six pounds, so two of those. First stop, Costco for 12 pounds of meatballs. But we still have one. The equivalent of five cans in one, so it doesn't take so much to open them. Next, chef store for cans of cream of mushroom soup. First part of the shopping day. We like to cut our meatballs in half. We've been cutting them in half for many years. It's just the right size for us. We usually cook our meatballs with mushroom sauce in the crock pot or slow cooker. But you can also use a roasting pan in the oven or in a pot on the stove. We like to saute our mushrooms a bit before we add them to the mix. Okay, so besides salt and pepper, we added about 27 ounces of milk to the 150 ounces of cream of mushroom soup. The 50 ounce can, pretty much the same as the 10 ounce cans, but you don't have to open as many. It doesn't have the stupid little pull top that leaves the ridge around there and damages the rubber spatula. Comes out much easier. Same stuff, just easier to use. Then you only have to open two of them or three of them instead of 15 of the others. We mix it all together and then heat it well until it's nice and hot and bubbly for a few hours in a crock pot or on the stove top or in the oven, uh, any way you want to cook it. The meatballs and mushroom sauce is ready to put in the pans. Uh, then they can get in the freezer for pre-freezing. So we've got the seven by seven pans and some dividers to divide them in half. We'll put one pound in each pan or a half in each half pan. Going to spray them with just a touch of non-stick cooking spray to help them pop out better before the freeze drying. So we ended up with them on the stove. Uh, usually we cook it in the crock pots, but we don't usually make this big of a batch all at once. Crock pot would have been a better choice. So I'm going to start with the pans with the divider. I'm going to give it just a touch of spray and the divider. And then I'm going to just wipe it down. All right, so. So tear it out and I've got it in ounces. I'm going to do a half pound in each side. I'm going to use the measuring cup. I'm going to get it close so my spilling is less because of course there's going to be spilling because it's what I do. So kind of stir it around. I'm going to go for a half pound in each side. Okay, that's just over a half pound. Oops, just need probably one more meatball in there. Come on. All right, so it's gonna be just slightly over a pound, but we'll weigh those when we put them on the trays. So I'm gonna kind of shake them just a little bit. And then that will be ready for pre-freezing. And these dividers have, um, have magnets inside of them so that they kind of stick to the bottom of the pan. That way if they can't float up. We'll do one pound in this one and this time, oops, almost forgot. Spray it lightly. Yeah. 
and a little bit more. Come on. There we go. Oh, one pound serving. Okay, do a half pound on each side. I'll just continue filling the pans. Then we'll get them in the freezer for pre-freezing. All right, the freeze dryer is finished defrosting. I'll take the fan out of the door. I'll get the baffle out and we'll get this ready for pre-freezing for the next batch. Um, oops, get the thermometer underneath again. Okay, so I'll close the drain valve. And here's the water from the pasta. So one of the lighter batches besides cheese. So a relatively light batch, um, not too bad of amount of water. So get it started pre-freezing for this batch because it's already about 8.35 in the evening. And continue. And the drain valve is closed. As soon as that's cold, we'll get back and get the food in there. So it's about quarter after 10 at night. Time to get the meatballs in there. Got the trays in there, nice and cold. We'll get the meatballs. I'm going to use all of the ones that have dividers. Got all those on the cart. We'll wheel that over and get them de-panned and onto the trays. These might be a bit cold and gooey, so I'm gonna wear gloves on these, or for these. So I'll get the pan out there. Gonna add parchment paper to them. Start with the full block. So this was one pound, so the tray is going to have two and a half pounds. Whoops. Well, I didn't expect that, so get that onto there. So that way they're pre-measured. And mainly I'm checking to see how much weight they lost just in the freezer. So oh, there's a half pound, tray one, 1886. So got one pound, one pound, and a half pound. Tray two, and again, I kept these in the freezer to keep them nice and cold. So just kind of pushing out on the edges a little bit. Yep, and that little piece of it stayed in there. I'll just kind of pop that into there. And tear. So half pound blocks and a one pound block. So I can bag them that way later or I can mix them all up. Uh, I'm probably gonna try to keep them separate though because then I know how much they weigh before and I know how much to get them back to. Okay, let's see if we can get these in there. So that way it's actually in that one. But that's good. And the last one. A 
All right. All right, so get those over there and get them in. Drilling into your meatballs with mushroom sauce is not a requirement, but who wouldn't want to do that? All right, they're ready to go into the freeze dryer. Uh, the freeze dryer is very cold already. We'll get them going. Of course you drill into the meatballs with mushroom sauce. How else are you gonna get thermometers in there? Okay, starting at the bottom, tray four. All right, so those are nice and cold still. So it's about 10 degrees, eight degrees, uh, it's showing about 14, 16 right now. This one's showing about 16, 18. But they might still be going down because I just put them, those are the last thermometers to go in. It already has a seal ring around it because all that warm air in there. And then as soon as you close it, the air starts to contract and it'll, and it'll help form a seal. If there wasn't a seal ring around there, I could take my little palette knife and just put it in where there's a, a piece missing of the ring and just give this a little bit of a twist and very lightly and it pushes out that seal just enough to give a seal ring on there so it's been freezing for two hours it was about 20 degrees below 25 degrees it's climbing because they just put that uh, stuff the food in there that's only five degrees or ten degrees so it was 35 degrees warmer than this so it's going to come up a bit and plus all the air that just went in there so it's going to come up a little bit and then it'll start going back down we'll check it again later okay making sure that the cooling fan is on make sure that the oil level is up okay that's set for mine i also this is the little power thing that powers the uh, motor for the timer so that'll get the uh, recirculating pump going. And it's pumping. And off. It's been, it finished about three hours ago. Uh, I had added two more hours last night. But now I'm going to warm it back up because it's negative 40-ish in there. So I'll get it rewarmed and then I can weigh it. Um, and then I'll add more time to make sure that it's dry before I actually take it out. So I'm going to add more time. And the drain valve never been opened. And continue. You can see the temperature. Yeah, so it says it's negative 38 right now. We'll let that warm up for a short time and then we'll uh, check it. If something's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So the meatballs and mushroom sauce have been rewarming. Uh, let them go longer than necessary. We'll take them out weigh them, put them back in to make double sure that they're dry. Uh, as you have seen in, during the pasta video, when uh, what seven grams of water looks like, by all the other metrics, the pasta was done. If you had just checked the temperatures, it was all warm. You'd snap it, it's going to break. But there was still six or seven grams of water in it that came out. That's a significant amount of water. Uh, I'm not going to bag anything with that amount of water in it. And I can't afford, no, I'm too cheap to buy a two or three thousand dollar water meter that, the, that we would use in a commercial type setting. This method gives me about the same information about how dry it is. The meter would tell me without having to put it back in for two hours, and that could be worth it at some point if you were doing it commercially. So arrow down past it. Okay, get the drain valve open.
I'm going to take them all out and I'm going to rotate the trays top to bottom as usual. So I'm going to start with tray one and you can see how they've shrunk a little bit. A little bit of space there now. And I don't expect these to lose any weight over this next time period because I'd already given it extra time overnight. This one back in, so I'm putting it on the bottom. And tray three. Okay, so I'll put three up where two was. And put two down here. Now we have them one through four from the bottom to the top. And the thermometers are about 10 degrees difference. So the bottom one, well that was here, is about 105. The one that was on the top is about 110. And these two middle ones are about 120. Okay. And well, before I start that was to, if it doesn't lose any more weight, then I'll use the 36 hours as the total amount of um, freeze dryer time. More time. Oh, yeah, close the drain valve. Continue. And it's still cool. And we'll come back in just an hour or two. Every so often on most batches, I give the vacuum pump a little jiggle to, to encourage the water droplets to go down the hose. Blobs of water going down there. Welcome back. We're ready to check the freeze dryer to make sure that the food is dry now. Or actually, we'll make sure that it was dry before we did this check. Okay, got the drain valve open. Now we'll double check this. Okay, starting at tray one. And that's almost 120 degrees. Perfect, so no change there. So tray two, no change. Okay, tray three. Ten seventy-seven. So it's down by a little less than one, but it's been two hours, so I'm still happy with that, as long as this next one is good. And 1086. Okay, again, less than one. I'm happy with that after that amount of time. So I'll go ahead and push no defrost. Start making it quiet. Turn off the recirculating pump for the oil. Okay, so get the defrost fan in. And my little defrost baffle. And of course everything's still warm. And get that defrosting. So we'll get the trays over to the bagging area and get those started. So just about 25 kilowatt hours, but I'd forgot to reset it until it was 0.6 on the previous one. So we'll add 0.6 to that. So, uh, so almost 25.6 kilowatt hours. Now I will remember to reset it this time. So oh, we'll get the thermometers out and get the new weights and calculate how much per bag. Okay, 1085, 1068. Yeehaw! All right. Okay, so we'll do the math, find out how much per serving. We're calling each one of the one cup portions one serving. So this whole batch gives 20 servings. So some two serving batch or amounts and some one serving. So that's the plan on how to bag them. And by using the dividers, I already have most of it portioned into single servings. So most of them are going to be bagged as single servings with some of them uh, as two servings. Okay, that's the plan. So 20 servings total. And I've got the little pint bag. I'm going to try these in a pint bag to see if that'll fit. With these meatballs, they've already been pre-measured out. 
Each one of these is an eight ounce serving. This is a 16 ounce two serving. So I already have the weights, done the math. So this needs 161 grams put back in it. I'm using a pint bag and hopefully this will fit or I'll have to relabel because uh, of the saucy bits in here. So I'm going to kind of put this over the funnel and give it just a little bit of a crush because I don't want to break up the, the meatballs or anything. Just again, give it a little bit of a crush. Okay, that fits easily. So I'll use this pint bag for the one serving and I'll use the quart bag for the two servings. So I'll get everything labeled and I'll be back. All right, so I've got bags labeled. Blah, blah, blah. Don't listen to that guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He labeled the bags with the, the weight of the dry product, not the weight of the water. It needs to be 161 and a half grams of water for the one serving and 323 grams of water for the now two serving bag. bag. I'll have to go back down and relabel them because he didn't know what he was doing. So my plan is, again, I'm just going to keep each part together and do it just a little bit of a crush so that it'll fit in to the bag. So try to keep all the bits together for each portion. And then finally, the two serving ones. Again, just just a little bit of a crush for the for the sauce portion of it. And as always, clean the table well before I start, because I know I'm going to end up spilling some of it. So I want to be able to salvage it all. Okay, so. I'm going to get this down to the corner. And get that portion into the bag also. The cut in half meatballs definitely freeze dye a little faster because they're smaller. But even if it weren't freeze drying, we've been cutting the meatballs in half for many years. Um, we just like the size better in all the things we use it for. Oh, I crushed that one a little bit too hard and broke the meatball. So we have 10 one serving bags and five two serving bags. Now, I need to add another thing. The meatballs and mushroom sauce are in the bags now, but I haven't closed them yet. I need to add one more thing. So they're labeled with the uh, amount that's in it, the serving size, and the amount of water that's needed to bring them back uh, to the same rehydration level. One more thing I want to add is instant clear gel. If you take some types of sauces, such as a mushroom soup based thing, and freeze it and then thaw it, the sauce will become runny. Uh, the thickener uh, will fail. Instant clear gel doesn't have to be cooked to thicken. Uh, so I've used this in some other sauces before. Turns out really, really well. Um, I'm going to add a teaspoon of instant clear gel to, for each serving in all of the bags. So one, one teaspoon in the little bags and two teaspoons in the, the bigger bag. That way the sauce will have a more similar thickness as it did before it was frozen. Uh, this happens with some of the other sauces, like uh, nacho cheese sauce. It will become thin and runny soon after you rehydrate it. 
but if you add the instant clear gel as a, into the powder when you freeze dry it or when you bag it, then it comes out great. This is the instant clear gel that we're using. Uh, we've been using it for a while, been real happy with it for this type of item. It doesn't need to be heated to thicken. You could, you could thicken cold water with it if you want. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of this to the small bags and two teaspoons to the bigger bags so that when it gets rehydrated, it will thicken properly. So I'm adding a teaspoon to each of the bags. So, and then after I get them all in there, I'm going to give them a little bit of a shake too to help mix it around. Okay, now give them a little shake to mix it. So with that all in there, now I can get the oxygen absorbers. Adding a thickener is not required. You can just let the sauce be thin. Uh, it's going to be thinner and more runny than before because the thickeners that were in the mushroom soup are going to have broken down. Um, by adding this in there, it's going to re-thicken it. It's what we like to do. I'm using the 300 cc oxygen absorbers for all of these bags. It's a little overkill for these. Well, it's a little overkill for all of these sizes because these absorb a lot. Uh, but that's my minimum size that I use for everything. So I'll get those in there and we'll get them sealed up. Oops. So did I get two of them in one? Yep, there it is. Got two of them in that one. All right. So I'll squish out as much extra air as I can and zipper them shut. And you could also use uh, a vacuum to pull out the extra air. And with these, I don't have to worry about it, them being crushed, so it's fine to suck out all the air you can. All right, so get these sealed and sealing as close to the top of the bag as I can, but still getting a full seal width. And the first, the first bag in a series I like to do twice to make sure that it's completely up to temperature. Because I think that the, the big metal area under here really soaks up some heat. So I'm always concerned about that first, that first bag. So I do it a couple of times to make sure that it's well sealed. Gets nice and melty in there. Okay. And keeping the seal up high so I've got room for additional seals if that one's to fail. All right, you can see a real nice seal across the top and room for more seals there if necessary. Then the last thing before I put it in the storage bins is adding a gross weight on each bag. So 158 grams. That way, if they have a problem in the future, I'll know. Yeehaw! So the first two bins are full. In fact, this second bin is a little over full with the pasta. There were so many bags. I'm going to rearrange them slightly. I'll adjust my location tracking sheet so I know where they're at uh, to account for that. Okay, so let's get these in bins. Uh, move a couple of things and start on bin three. And then after that, I'll get the trays cleaned and put them in the freezer to chill while the freeze dryer finishes defrosting. Get ready for the next batch, which again, we're at the bottom of the list, jumping back to the top of the list, going back to meats. Okay, so get these in the bins. And it'll be a total of 15 bags of the meatballs with mushroom. And that's 20 servings. All right, so that's beginning of bin three. So those are stored away. We've got them recorded as to where they are so we can find them again later. So we've got the first batch in bin three and we'll move on from there until we finish this up and we'll be able to show what 500 pounds of food looks like, how much storage space that takes. 
And obviously it's going to be different if you use different bags. If I were to use just bigger bags, I'd be able to fit it into a little bit smaller space. And probably if you use like a cardboard box that has nice squared corners instead of these tapered sides of these bins, you'd probably be able to fit it in a smaller space too. Um, these bins work well for me. They're contained, they're, they're pretty tight. Uh, and I can pull one off a shelf and take it with me if I want. And with the way we're loading these bins with a variety of stuff, it'd be really handy. Grab a bin and go. All right, so we'll get that ready for the next batch.